Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I would like to add my support to the motion that this Assembly supports a call on the federal government to immediately implement our government's proposed national abandoned well completion program that would put over a thousand Saskatchewan energy workers back to work. Here, here. Mr. Deputy Speaker, whether the opposition wants to accept it or not, the oil and gas industry in Saskatchewan now plays and will continue to be a very important part of our economy. Here, here. Here. Oil and gas accounts for just over 15 percent to this government's, this province's GDP. New exploration and development in the oil and gas sector was $3.6 billion in 2015. The combined value of oil and gas production was $8.3 billion in 2015. There were an estimated 33,000 direct and indirect person years of employment in the upstream oil and gas se sector in this province. In Canada, Saskatchewan ranks number two in national oil production and number three in national gas production. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we are at an unprecedented time in our economic history. After cleaning up the NDP legacy of poor resource sector development and stopping the flow of young people to Alberta to find work, we find ourselves in an economic downturn. Unfortunately, pipeline development has hit some major hurdles. Oil prices are mired in below cost of production levels, and we're hearing daily from skilled, out-of-work oil workers who are walking that fine line of whether being able to support their families. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in my hometown of Churchbridge, located 40, uh, 60 miles north of the nearest oil well, I know of a number, a number of young people who have been working in the oil patch. A couple have managed to stay on with original companies, but at a significantly reduced salary. One individual owns his own oil service company and has laid off 50% of his employees. One has gone to work on an American-owned rig in Kyrgyzstan. A couple others went to BC in, works of, in hopes of finding work in, in gas fields. The rest are applying, waiting, and wondering if there will be work for them soon. These are all young people with families to feed, house payments to make, and a community to support. At $50 per barrel oil and an uncertain future lying ahead in regards to pipeline development, they are really unsure of where their future is. Mr. Speaker, we need to keep our rural community strong so our schools continue to have students, the hockey rinks keep busy, and there are parents shopping at the local co-op, and that these communities continue to have good wage-earning taxpayers that help keep the local and the provincial economy strong. Here, here. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Saskatchewan is one of the most productive workforces in the country. In 2014, Saskatchewan's labour productivity was $56.50 per hour compared to $53 an hour nationally, meaning for every hour of labour work, $56.50 was added to Saskatchewan's real GDP. Saskatchewan has the lowest unit cost of labour among provinces and one of the most loyal workforces in the country. Despite an unemployment growth or net employment growth of 5,200 jobs in 2015, the resource sector has been struggling. During that same period, we cannot afford to lose these quality workers to some other province or jurisdiction. Mr. Deputy Speaker, there is a solution to retaining this skilled workforce in this province, and it is called the Accelerated Well Cleanup Program in Saskatchewan. This proposal calls for $156 million in federal funding to help stimulate employment in the oil and gas support sector by accelerating the cleanup of oil wells no longer capable of production. There are an estimated 20,500 suspended wells in this province that are currently not producing and are waiting to be decommissioned and or reclaimed. Not all of those are truly orphaned wells. And an orphan well is defined as a well that has been investigated and confirmed as not having any legal responsibility responsible or financially able party to deal with its abandonment and reclamation. Mr. Deputy Speaker, contrary to what the member from Saskatoon Natana believes, our province has acted very responsibly and that has developed an orphan well program in 2009 that was designed to ensure that the costs of abandoning and remediating orphan wells and facilities are being paid for solely through an industry-funded levy system or security deposits that are collected from the licenses before they become defunct. Since that fund was established, the Ministry has observed 230 orphan wells that have been successfully abandoned and decommissioned and has remediated and reclaimed approximately 63 orphan wells 
at a total cost of approximately $8.3 million. They also have security deposits totaling $68 million from distressed oil companies to ensure that there is money available to decommission in times of bankruptcy or financial distress. However, there are far more wells abandoned than there are security deposits for, and this is where we are seeking federal assistance to get those truly abandoned wells reclaimed and our oil field workers back to work. Mr. Deputy Speaker, with our federal ask of $156 million, it is estimated that our province could clean up an additional 1,000 orphan wells. On the average, a well cleanup could cost anywhere from $50,000 to $150,000 per well. At the $156 million funding level, it is estimated that the cleanup project could bring 1,000 more oil field employees back to work. These employees would be responsible for environmental site assessments, removal of old equipment, remediation of oil and salt water spills, restoration and recontouring the site, and the revegetation of land. Not only are there physical environmental benefits, but it will also assist the government in reducing its greenhouse gas emissions by eliminating fugitive emissions from the old wellheads such as methane and butane. A Princeton University study analyzed a small number of abandoned wells in Pennsylvania, and they found that all wells leak a certain amount of, of methane, but they found that over 16% leak more than 3.2 cubic meters of gas per day. This amount would supply a large house its daily gas requirements. Unchecked in the United States, this could represent 13% of all the human-caused methane emissions in that country. Mr. Speaker, orphan wells are not just a Western Canadian issue. All through the shale oil region of the United States, similar numbers are evident. North Dakota and South Dakota, Nebraska, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, just to name a few states. These have abandoned oil wells found beneath homes. They've found them underneath buildings, underneath streets. They're in, under busy streets. They're in parks. They're found in backyards, forests, and cornfields all through the United States. There have been open well holes in the ground in the United States from the 1800s. And these are concerns throughout North America, that these abandoned wells have been leaking oil, natural gas and brine into soil and drinking water, and they've even posed explosion risks. Secondly, fixing uh, orphan wells in Saskatchewan is going to restore agricultural land and habitat to its original state. Oil and salt-affected soils will be removed, and this land will be placed back to its original productive state. This is going to improve the safety of grazing livestock and wildlife around the old well sites. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I believe that this is a common-sense approach to a multi-level problem. If these environmental issues are not cleaned up soon, they're going to become a larger, more expensive environmental issue into the future. Mr. Deputy Speaker, critics of this idea have suggested that the industry should pay for this problem. However, a recent court decision in Alberta, the Redwater Energy case, ruled that in the case of a bankruptcy, energy companies must use their remaining assets to pay back their lenders before cleaning up old well sites. Unfortunately, this ruling reduces the ability of even government regulators to ensure that they have secured adequate funds to properly decommission a well. With the economic slowdown in the oil and gas sector being experienced today, it's safe to assume that the levies generated for the Orphan Well Fund are going to be reduced and that the impending bankruptcies that we're going to see among producers is going to increase the number of orphan wells into the future. While increasing levies on solvent producers which our friends across the floor are encouraging, it's going to add additional taxes to an already struggling industry, as it's about as beneficial as adding a carbon tax to that same industry. If the federal government is searching for new and unique ways to stimulate the economy. What a better way to get small companies and people back to work. It's these small companies and their workforce that are the backbone to the oil and gas industry in this province. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we owe it to the Scots and the Davids and the Jackies in rural Saskatchewan. They deserve to get back to work. Mr. Speaker, I will be supporting the motion put forward by the member of Cypress Hills. Yeah.